Hey everyone, it is Apostle Michelle Peterson. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. So today I am going to talk a little bit more about the love letter that, uh, I call it the love letter, but it's a message from the Lord that he actually gave me a while back. And so I'm just breaking down little parts of uh, this message and kind of just talking more about it. The Lord wanted me to talk about it and you know, just to explain some things um about what he's saying here and so today this part we're going to talk about uh the section when he talks about come and be a part of my plans come and be a part of my plans and so uh this part i think is um i think this is where the relationship comes in when we have a relationship with the lord because the bible talks about that there's two choices you know basically we can make we can choose life or we can choose death and any choice that we make that doesn't have anything to do with God or God is not a part of that or we don't have that relationship with God that choice those choices are going to lead to death it doesn't matter how we see it but those choices will will basically lead us to death okay and so, but we do have another choice. We have another choice that leads us to life. And this is life uh, everlasting, life eternally with the one we have the relationship with, with God the Father through his son, the Lord Jesus. Okay. So choosing life is choosing this relationship that we have with God. And most of you guys, I don't know if we have unbelievers that are watching this, um, but most of you guys are believers. You have uh, entered into the covenant relationship with God and um, you you know you're reading his word you're desiring to, to know more about him and so um, you have chosen that path of life and so that path is a relationship with God is uh, walking with him in this earth doing things with him and so here he's saying come and be a part of my plans he has plans for you he has plans for us. He has plans for your family. He has plans for if you're a ministry, the ministry that you're in. Um, he has plans for your children. He has plans for if you're working for a company. You know, he has plans for that company because you're there. You are the light. And even in this world, he has plans for you in this world to be that light, to change lives. When you come into uh, contact with people, you know, um, to change a person's life, to show the love of God to that person, um, to show unconditional love to people who are your enemies, to people who hurt and you offend you, to show that to them so they can see God in us. So here the Lord says, come and be a part of my plans. His plans for you and us is to be a light to this world, is to show love to the whole world, and to reveal who he is, his heart, his desires to the world also. Something great about God that I think is really, really cool. I am actually single and I have been through a divorce for all you people. If you've been through a divorce, you know it's really tough. And, um, you know, you have to bounce back from that. And then sometimes you don't know if you want to get married again or if you want to get married. You may feel like... You know, you want a companion, but you may not want to get married again. So my, uh, my conversation with the Lord was, I was talking about getting married. And so I was just saying, Lord, I don't really know if I want to get married again, because being in the ministry of deliverance, there's a lot of things that if you're not walking in deliverance and trying to keep things off of you, the enemy can control you and have you doing whatever he wants you to do. He can have you cussing people out. He could have you attacking people, hurting people, uh, you know, um, getting, you know, getting really upset with people, uh, even lusting, looking at, you know, another man or looking at a woman, um, you know, and not uh, practicing self-control. So the enemy can really control people. Um, you know, a lot of people are not able to control themselves. That's why you have a, um, a lot of people falling into sin. So my conversation with the Lord was, 
with me being in deliverance, I don't know if I want to be married again. I know I want a companion, but I don't know if I want to be married because, you know, um, I am working, I work every day to try to keep my heart pure from sin and pain and hurt and all of that stuff. That's something I work hard every day. Whenever I con in, come into contact with a person and they start attacking me, I try to get it out of my heart as soon as possible so I can treat that person like they never did anything wrong to me. Okay? And when you are married, it's hard. <laughs> if you get married to the wrong person, they can offend you. They can attack you every single day. They can belittle you. Um, they can make you feel like you're uh, not worthy. They can reject you. They can flirt with other people in front of your face, really disrespect you and dishonor you. But you're already married to them, so what do you do? You're constantly getting jabs in your heart and you're married, so you're kind of stuck in that type of situation. So my, my conversation with the Lord was, I don't want to be stuck anymore. I was married and I was stuck in a situation, um, you know, but, you know, now I don't want to be stuck. I, I know what can happen because I have a free will and other people have free wills too. And just because I want to do the right thing by God, just because I'm trying to keep my heart pure and I'm trying to overcome whatever the enemy is throwing at me, not everyone is trying to keep their heart pure. Not everyone is going to try to overcome the enemy. Some people faint. Some people can't endure. Some people are weak. You know, and they just don't fight. So by me knowing that, you know, I was talking to the Lord. I just, I was just telling him, I don't think I want to be married again, you know. And so the Lord told me, he said this, it is his will for me to be married. It's God's will for me to be married. That's what he said. But he understood my reason for not getting, not wanting to get married. He understood that I, I wanted to keep my heart pure and people have free wills and it's not automatic that a person is going to be, you know, uh, gentle with my heart. It's not automatic that they're going to care about how they treat me. That's not automatic in a marriage. So nothing is automatic with people. <laughs> nothing is automatic with me. I may have the best intentions, but something can still happen. You know, I could hurt people. I could, you know, offend people all the time you know I could but I was saying nothing is automatic um, when it comes to humans when it comes to us because we all have a free will and we have an enemy that is influencing us our emotions our feelings our thoughts so unless you are a strong person and you can exercise self-control really really good and you know when the enemy is communicating with you and you can cast it down really fast like Jesus a lot of times you're going to be doing stuff that's going to hurt people and that's understandable um so i understood i understood that and the lord knows that so when i was telling him he totally agreed why i didn't want to get married unless it was just someone that was so pure in love i mean they had pure love and humbled you know that would be a great fit for me but other than that um nothing else i wouldn't be interested in getting married and so, but what I wanted to share with you is that God understood my heart and the reason why I didn't want to get married, even though it was his will for me to get married again. He understood my heart and he said, okay, he was okay with my decision. So God wants to be a part of your plans. Now, if you have good motives about something that you want to do, let's say if you want to go to uh the the cancer hospital and you want to pray for people with cancer and let's say the lord wanted you to go to minister at a different place but you really wanted to go to the cancer hospital i mean it's just you know you experience someone passing from cancer but you wanted to go there and minister the lord knows your heart he knows that your intentions is really really good and he wants to be a part of that plan you know and so when I was saying that God wants to be a part of your plans, God is so, I mean, whenever you get to know him, you will see that he is really open. <laughs> He's open to like things that we like to. He's open to it. Um, you know, uh, he's flexible. 
like with Abraham. You can see how flexible God is with his relationship with Abraham and Moses. <laughs> with Abraham, when um, the, you know, the Sodom and Gomorrah, it was going to be destroyed. Abraham was asking God questions about when he spared this city. The Lord was like, yeah, yeah, I would, I would, I was spared. And so God is flexible. With Moses, at first, the children of Israel, they were just doing some really crazy stuff. And the Lord was like, okay, I'm just going to wipe them off the face of the earth. And we're going to start over with you, Moses. Moses was like, what? You know, what would, you know, Egyptians say? So the Lord was flexible. He changed his mind about that. You know, so we can kind of talk to the Lord and kind of, you know, pour our heart out to him. He's, you know, if everything is coming from a pure heart and you're communicating with him, he listens. He listens and he's very, very open. Um, I'm telling you, like you wouldn't even believe how open he is. Um, and he understands us. He understands the things that are in our heart. He understands, you know, our desires and he wants to be a part of that. You know, so I just want to say God wants to be a part of your plans. Never think that God just wants to just totally make all your plans, everything good that you want to do in this life, go away. And he just wants you to only do, you know, everything that he wants you to do. But he will, he wants to be a part of the stuff that you want to do to your plans. Okay. Then here he says, I am meek and low in heart. I am gentle. God is meek. God is gentle. God is low in heart. And this is really, really cool because this is what the Lord Jesus said. Um, like, do we think of God as being gentle? Like, when we think of the Holy Spirit, well, most people, <laughs> when they think of the Holy Spirit, we think of the Holy Spirit as being gentle. You know, the Holy Spirit could actually be grieved we can be living in sin or we can hurt people and then we feel really really bad we feel like we grieve the holy spirit like he's very sensitive i'm um, here the lord is saying he's gentle even when he's um, doing things with you fellowshipping with you being a part of your life god is very very gentle and i'll just share this with you so you can just kind of see how the lord is when it comes to my situations in my life, just so you can kind of see how he is. Um, when I was uh, mentoring, I was mentoring for a couple of years and I was just getting frustrated because um, I was mentoring and trying to help people and trying to instill everything that I've learned and everything that the Lord has taught me, I'm trying to instill it in other people to help them grow in their walk with God. And they were growing spiritually really fast, but some things that you know i was hoping that they would be able to recognize when the enemy is attacking them they wasn't recognizing that fast i mean the enemy was just attacking them and and they just you know wasn't able to recognize it they didn't have that discernment yet that part really wasn't uh built up that much so i would get frustrated i would just be like lord i'm just tired of this <laughs> i'm tired of dealing with this situation you know, and they're not growing fast enough and this and that. And so sometimes I would react out of frustration, you know, to the people. I would just react, you know, because I felt really bad after I had reacted. And the Lord has said that I was too harsh. He said he didn't want me to be harsh with his people. Harsh. Now think about that. I said something that was out of a place of frustration i mean it wasn't bad but it was out of a place of frustration and it came out and i said it out of frustration and it was harsh it was like you know how we say tough love you're giving someone that tough love and a lot of times they need it actually exactly what i said and the way i said it it pierced that person and they thought about it for a whole week and they start working on that to change it but um the way i said it it was harsh and so even though it worked and it was the right i mean it was it wasn't anything bad i said um it was truth it worked but the way i said it and the place that it came from wasn't a gentle place you know it wasn't a place of love it wasn't a place that you know was a, a godly emotion it was frustration irritation anger 
So the Lord told me that was too harsh. Don't be harsh with my people. So he didn't want me to be harsh with his people. So I started trying to remember that. I was like, okay, Lord, I'm frustrated, you know, just, you know. And so I would ask the Lord, give me peace. Help me to not speak from that place. So, you know, I would have to respond, take some time to respond and, and not respond fast. But I understood that he didn't even want me to speak harsh to his people. Even the words, if they came from a bad place and I was speaking those words to his people, he didn't even want that. He wanted me to be gentle with them, being gentle with his sheep. He is gentle with his sheep. He is gentle with you. He is gentle with me. Um, he's not harsh. He's not anger, angry at us. Um, he's not frustrated with us. He is very gentle. And here it's saying he is meek. Very like, I can't even explain like the conversations I have with God and just listening to his voice and what he sounds like. I'm telling you, his voice is so innocent. He's so innocent. And like here, being meek, you know, like the, the per, like a person that you may know that's like really, really meek and humble. Um, just imagine communicating with them, you know, they would just be really, really, you know, like quiet and just very laid back and very, you know, calm at all times. Think about it. God is so relaxed, so peaceful. Um, so calm and when I'm hearing his words it's calming is I mean um, you know the only time I may hear the Lord say like things like really really respect like fast he'll respond and say no it'd be really really fast you know it's when something is like no <laughs> like if it's like a lie or something like that or just something um, that needs to be you know uh, you know checked really fast He'll say no, or it's like a correction or something, but it's, it's still gentle. It's nothing harsh. And so, but here he's saying, I am meek. I am low in heart. I am gentle. So I just wanted to let you guys, well, this is, this is only two, two sentences, but uh, in my next video, I'm going to talk more about this next se section of what he said. And so I have like one, two, three probably about four more videos to do I think from this message so I hope you guys enjoyed this message and I will see you guys in the next video God bless